Hey data people, if you're subscribed to me, you usually come around for all the Excel tips and tricks that I have to offer. However, for you emerging data analysts looking to expand on your skill set, the obvious next step is learning SQL. There are several SQL platforms that you could use to start your journey, and there are certainly many opinions on which one you should begin with. My personal preference, considering it's free and extremely easy to use, is MySQL. Now, a quick Google search will have you downloading it and installing it in no time. But the next logical step is importing data so you can get comfortable with the user interface and explore the wonderful world of data aggregation, Windows functions, and everything else that comes along within SQL. So to get you started, today I'm going to show you how to import an Excel file within the MySQL Workbench. It's quick and easy, but I do have a few helpful tips to keep in mind throughout the process. So let's jump in. This is our Excel file that we're going to be working with. Just a few rows, few columns, nothing too complicated. So it should be fairly easy and quick to import into MySQL Workbench. Now, just a heads up, this is saved with an Excel extension, and that does matter when trying to import files into MySQL, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, let's jump into MySQL Workbench. And once you have it installed and connect to a server, you should see a local instance here. In my case, I'm connected to my local computer. And if I were to click on it and open it up, you'll see this new window showing a schema pane, information pane. And I also have a query open to run some SQL scripts. Now, the first thing we want to do is create a new schema. And by creating a new schema, we're essentially setting up a new database to work from in which we can import our files, which in SQL are known as tables. By default, you should have this system schema set up. If you are a frequent MySQL user, you may have other schemas set up which you could import a table into an existing schema. However, let's go with the assumption that this is your first time, so we want to create a new schema or a new database to work from. But before we jump into that, I just want to reiterate, this is not a UI walkthrough. So I won't be going over all the various options in here, every single icon that you see. We just want to get your file imported so you can begin to work with MySQL. And the easiest way to do that if we highlight this database icon here, this allows us to create a new schema to the server. So go ahead and click that. And it generates this window here for you. And the only thing you really have to do is select a new name for your schema. In this case, we'll call it customer table. Select apply. Now you'll see that MySQL has generated this script to create the new schema. You could certainly have written this out yourself within the query window, but for beginners, this is probably the easiest first step. So this looks good. Just go ahead and select apply. And now we see this new customer table up here in the schema pane. If I open that up, you'll see tables, views, stored procedures, functions. The tables is where we want to import this file into. Now, if I go ahead and right click, select the table data import wizard. I want to browse for my file. And you'll see here that it's opened up to my desktop, which I did save the Excel file to but there's no file to be selected. And that's because it's looking for a CSV file. And since we saved our file as an Excel format, you're not gonna be able to find it. If I open up this dropdown, the only options are comma separated values or a JSON file. Now let's close this out. And we wanna go back into our Excel file. And all we wanna do is resave this as a CSV file. All right, with that complete, let's go back to MySQL Workbench. We'll restart the import wizard, and now we see our file. Select that, now we click Next. Now we get an option to create our new table. And you'll see in the drop down here, this is customer table, that's our schema. Following the period is the table name. By default, it chooses the file name, but let's go ahead and change this. Let's make it customers. Now, generally, I will check this drop table of exists checkbox. And what that does is if the table exists already within the schema under that given name, it'll replace the file with the new import. It's just generally good practice from my experience. So we'll check that off, click next. And now we're in our import settings. All of this is pretty standard. I normally like to leave it with the default settings. Obviously, there will be times where you want to manipulate this but you can see our encoding is the UTF-8, which is our CSV format. And it also lists all your columns 
with the given data type that MySQL has identified. We see INT for integer, we have text values. But what I wanna point out is this last purchase field. As you can see from the preview window below, these are dates. However, MySQL is identifying them as text. Now for the time being, we'll go ahead and import this as a text data type, but just keep this in mind because we will go back to this. Now, if I continue through the process, click next, the import's completed. We can see that seven records were successfully imported. So let's go ahead and click finish. Now to show the updates, we wanna refresh our schema. We'll select this little refresh icon in the top right pane. And now we have a drop down under our tables. If we open that up, we see our customers table. If I highlight this customers table, you can see all the data types that were pre-selected in this bottom information pane. To work with the table that's been imported, we wanna open a new query window. Now I already have one open, but if you wanted to open a new query window, the easiest way is to select this icon all the way to the left. That opens a new query window so we can run some script. So if I select that, a new tab opens. So let's just call everything from our table. And again, this isn't a full walkthrough in using SQL. So for you beginners, I don't expect you to grasp everything I'm about to do. But to call everything in the table, the script is pretty simple. To begin, we'll enter the select statement. And to pull everything, we want to use the asterisk. Now, where do we want to pull it from? We want to pull it from the customer's table. Now, right now in our schemas window, there's nothing selected. We can see our customer's table, but if we were to run this query as is, we'd get an error. We need to actually select the schema. Of course, there is script you can use to designate which schema you're running. You could also include the schema name in front of it, separated by a period. But generally, if you just click the customer table or the specific schema you want to use, MySQL will recognize that location. Finally, I'll enter a semicolon, which signifies in MySQL that is the end of the query. For our purposes, it's not such a big deal, but if you were to continue on with other queries within this window, that semicolon will let MySQL know that this is its own unique query and not to continue reading below this. To run the query, we have two lightning bolt icons at the top. Again, I won't go into detail, but in this case, you could hit either one. I'll just go ahead and select it, and this executes our script. Now, nothing happened. If I open up this bottom window that's hidden, we're gonna see all of our transaction detail. And you'll see I have an error, and it's telling me that I did not select a database to run this query, which is my fault. I did select the customer table, but I did not double click. So when you double click the database, it'll turn bold. And now MySQL knows that our script is directly linked to this specific schema. So let's go ahead and rerun the query. And now we see our output. We have all our columns and rows. However, pay attention to that last purchase column. Again, these look like dates to us. But MySQL doesn't read these as dates. Traditionally, SQL interprets dates in a different format. Normally it's a four digit year followed by a hyphen, two digit month, then another hyphen and a two digit year. And why this matters? Once you start getting into filtering, aggregations, and other conditional options within SQL, if you're using a date field to filter it down, it's not gonna be so easy for SQL to understand what you're trying to say because these are listed as text values. Now there are other ways in SQL to update this with more in-depth scripting, some modifications you can make with your query. But for beginners, it's probably best to adjust this before the file's imported. So what we can do, if we go back into our import wizard, we just stick with the same file, choose the same name, and now we're back in our import settings. Now remember we saw the drop down earlier of changing the different field types. We could select the date time option for the last purchase date. And you'll notice in the bottom that the date format is set up as I previously explained, including the hours, minutes, and seconds. And if I were to continue to import this, You'll see in the final end stage here that zero records were returned, so it did not import successfully. And to fix that before the file is imported, we have to make some changes to our CSV file. Now we're back in our CSV version of the file, and I wanna select all the dates in column F. Go ahead and press Control-1, and we'll open up the format window. Now it does recognize this as a date field within Excel, but we actually wanna to go to the custom option. And under custom, we'll match the format that we saw within MySQL. 
specific year, month, day, followed by hours, minutes, and seconds. Press OK. Let's resave our file. Jump back into MySQL Workbench. And let's re-import this. Again, rename the file. And we have our drop table if it exists, which is good. It'll overwrite it. Last purchase date is still listed as text, but now we choose date time. Select next, next. And now you see that seven records were imported successfully. We'll refresh our schema and let's rerun our script. And you can see that the last purchase field does have our date time format. If I select the table, you can see under the information pane, it is listed as a date time. So now any further querying that we were to do to incorporate the date would run successfully. So I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough of how to import your Excel files into MySQL. It's a fairly straightforward process, but you do have to be aware of the various data types. If you guys enjoyed this and you're looking for a bit more explanation on using SQL, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to provide a more in-depth walkthrough on using MySQL, whether it's the functionality within the workbench or to help you guys learn structured query language to manipulate your data within any SQL database. Thanks for watching.